Hello, club officers. Hello, Toastmasters. My name is Steve, and I've been a Toastmaster now for 30 years, and I'm here to talk to you about the role of being a vice president of education. I don't know how many times I've been vice president of education, but I know I've been club president for seven times with seven different clubs. And I believe the VP education role is absolutely essential in making a quality difference. So big thank you, bigger than this screen can represent. Thank you for coming together to make a difference for your club. I hope this session offers something valuable for you. For those of you who are returning or experienced club officers, fantastic. I'm glad you're here. I know no one wants to waste their time, but you can make a difference by talking to other club officers about the importance of being a trained club officer and sharing with new people in this district who are taking on this role. So let's get to it. We're going to talk about Toastmaster VP of Education roles, responsibilities, and resources. The most important resource in printed form that I have to give you isn't even on the list you're going to get at the end. This is called the Club Leadership Handbook. It is available from Toastmasters International. And that copy I just held up was printed in 2014. They used to send a copy to every club. They used to send seven copies to every Toastmaster club. Now you can get it for free from the Toastmasters website. Simply Google Toastmasters and Club Leadership Handbook. It's about 65 pages long, and it describes how to build a culture of excellence in Toastmasters. It's not just the, the things you have to do to make a club work, it's the things you should do to make a good club. So the, the Vice President of Education's roles. Well, first, your objectives today, to think about the roles you're serving as a club officer, to show you how to fulfill your responsibilities and to find the resources that will help you make a difference. As a club officer, the most important role you have is to show people that you are an active member who is having fun. So simply being a club member is important. No one wants to see an officer who's having a hard time or they're putting in so much work that they're not enjoying the experience. Be an officer who's glad to be there. You're going to be doing more things than other members in the club, but that's okay. You're going to get a lot out of this experience. So first of all, be an involved club member who's having fun. Secondly, be committed to the program quality. You are someone who puts on your, your eyes and views what's happening in the club meeting. Think about, is this for quality or is this for expedience? Think about what you can do to make sure that the club is always choosing a quality direction forward. Third, you're gonna be planning for the future. Your term is perhaps six months, your term might be for a year. Whatever your term of service, you are carrying forward the club so that another group of Toastmasters in the future will have the benefit of your work. Think about the difference you're making, not just for the next meeting, but over the next six months, the next year. Planning for the future is important. Not every month in Toastmasters in this is the same. We do some special things throughout the year. Finally, the Fourth role as a Toastmaster Vice President of Education is you are the chief advocate for the Pathways Program. The Pathways Program is our official Toastmasters educational program. I've been through three different educational programs. This one is exciting in that it's identified 11 pathways that Toastmasters might move through. It's identified special skills for each of these pathways. It's got new emphasis on technology, helping people to connect up with the written resources they need through mobile phones and through laptop computers. And the organization is less of a printing press and more of an idea resource organization with the Pathways program. Learn how to use the Pathways program. Learn how to show people to use it and get people excited about their choices. It's an important part of your service in your club. 
As vice president of education, you have particular responsibilities and the organization points out you have responsibilities in the club meeting, outside the club meeting, and in the executive committee that you're gonna be serving on. So let's look at what those responsibilities actually look like. During the club meeting, you're gonna be involved before the club actually starts, during the club meeting, and uh, especially when you arrive at the club meeting. Your work in preparation for the club meeting and as you first get there are essential in setting a quality experience for your club. Before the club meeting, you should be in communication with your Toastmaster. Look over the agenda for the coming up for the meeting that's coming up. Look over where there might be gaps in the program. Encourage people to do more than just give speeches in the club. You're going to learn a lot more of the Toastmasters program if you take on all the different roles. You'll, you'll learn how to run a meeting. You'll learn how to listen well. You'll learn to think more fluidly without preparation. And I've just been joined by a man who's not a Toastmaster, but he's my cat. He's joined my household and he's looking for reassurance that everything's good. So I'm in a stronger place with this little kitty that I know he's off camera right now. But So be looking at the agenda, looking for what you can do to make a difference for your club. I'm going to move the keyboard so my cat doesn't step on it right here because he wants to do that. Look at the gaps in your program and look at how you can help you fill the gaps in the program. There you see my cat's tail. I know. You will, in addition, want to schedule special education sessions for your club. We're going to advocate several that make a difference for most Toastmasters clubs. So these are things you do before the meeting ever happens and thinking about what you can offer for the future. Before the club meeting, you should be looking at the successful club series. Write it down, Google it. Look up the successful club series from Toastmasters International and think about people who can bring the presentation to your club. A successful club series presentation might take 15 minutes, it might take half hour, it might take the whole meeting. And your club will benefit from it. You, the, the successful club series, I recommend that every club do every year the uh, moments of truth, and evaluate to motivate. But there are many others that were valuable for, for bringing value to the club. And as you notice that people are completing their educational achievements, finishing a pathway, don't just notify the president of it, but make an announcement to the entire club that John has completed pathway level, level five in dynamic leadership get people to do a standing ovation for significant achievement. It doesn't happen just in one meeting or five. It takes a certain amount of work. It takes about six months to 16 months to complete a pathway. Give it the recognition it deserves. When you get to the Toastmaster meeting, verify that people are there, look at what roles are still missing, it's essential to have an evaluator for every speaker, and you're going to want to find an evaluator before the speakers are introduced. So if the Toastmaster isn't paying attention to that, call out a point of order. We need to find an evaluator for speaker number one today. Get that role assigned. Sometimes club members have to take on multiple roles in a meeting. And that's not such a bad thing, but if it happens too much, people can feel overwhelmed. Anyway, make sure that you are judicious and considerate in asking people to take on multiple roles. Make sure that everyone can have a, a chance to speak in the meeting and be of service in helping the Toastmaster. You want to make the Toastmaster look really good in putting on the meeting. You don't want there to be any gaps, and you can pay attention to what, what gaps should be filled before the meeting gets launched with table topics or speeches. You're also involved in greeting guests. One thing I would do with every guest is point out 
guest, I'd like you to meet the president of our club, John, and get a handshake moment from him, if the president can, can spare the moment. Make sure the guest has a connection with the leadership of the club. And they will feel good when they've had a chance to meet a president of a well-run club. Ask the guest he or she might like to speak during table topics. They may not know what that means. Tell them you'll have a chance to see someone else give a table topic before you so you can see, get the idea of what's involved. But it's basically just being able to speak for one minute on a topic we hand to you. A lot of people are going to be nervous about them. That's okay. Don't bully pressure them into it, but make sure they know they are welcome to start today with practicing the Toastmaster skills as a guest. During club meetings, you know, I think this slide is outdated. You're not going to be so much involved in initialing project completion. You're going to be doing this online with the Pathways program. But you should be an advocate encouraging people to move forward in their Pathways program and earning their awards. You're going to want to know Who's going to be completing Pathways assignments in the next three to six months? You're going to want to take that information to your club executive meeting. So talk to your members. Find out how close people are. You may need to call some members who aren't there frequently. And encourage everyone not just to be a speaker in the program, but to be someone who's taking a leadership role in the other parts of the meeting and point out that there are benefits for being an involved member in all parts of the Toastmaster Club's experience. You should be one of the people who recognize members for their achievements. Call out a moment to say, hey, we want to honor Mike. He's achieved something big. Let's give him a special moment of recognition and, and explain if club members don't know what it means to serve, for example, as a district officer, give them a taste of what you have to do to make that achievement work. Frequently, you may be called on to be a presiding officer. You are never, unless you're elected president, you're not the president of the club, but you are, the, if the president's not there, you are number two in rank. So you may be called on to lead the meeting. That means part of your education is being sure you know what happens to start the meeting and to close the meeting out. Saying the Pledge of Allegiance, calling on guests, introducing the Toastmasters. Those are all things we do in my club to start a meeting. At the end of the meeting, we give out awards. We ask club members, we ask guests what they think about the meeting. And we ask if there are any announcements. So those are things that the presiding officer usually does at most meetings. Learn how to do that so you feel comfortable in the role. Pay attention to what the presiding officer is doing and bring your own style to it. You may be called on to answer questions about special meetings that are coming up, contests, or district events that you want to encourage people to attend. So bring some opportunities, let people know about dates well in advance, and answer any questions that people might have. Outside the club meeting, you're, you're active not just in the meeting, but after the meeting. So you should be planning your club meetings three weeks in advance or more. Toastmasters International asks you to plan your club schedules three weeks in advance at a, at a minimum. Encourage people to participate, send emails, ask people what role they'll be taking on for the next two weeks, give them a chance to fill the spot. And especially when you have new members coming into the club, make sure they have a chance to give their icebreaker speech as soon as they're ready. I like to see new members giving their icebreaker speech within their next, their first three meetings. So they feel like they're a fully enrolled member of the club having given their icebreaker. You should also be involved in helping the new member find a mentor. You may want to encourage someone in your club to be the mentor chair who works with you in assigning mentors to every member. Maybe you're in a small club, so you might be the mentor chair. In any case, deal with the situation you have and encourage all new members to find a more experienced Toastmaster 
that they can call up. Perhaps they want to practice a speech with someone. Maybe they want to know how the grammarian role works or how, how to lead table topics. They don't have to call you for all these questions. If they've got a mentor, they've got a person to go to. My advice to you, appoint someone as a mentor chair and make sure that every new guest has a mentor. Encourage new members to fully participate in the program. That's, that's how programs get to be fun when you have new people adding their own take on the experience. So I said assign members, uh, mentors, be an active part in your club executive committee. How many of you have club executive meetings? I'm ashamed to say in my club, we haven't had a club executive meeting in about six months and it hurts our program quality. If your club isn't meeting as an executive team on a regular basis, once a month, every twice a month, by Zoom or in person, if you're not doing that, ask the club president when he or she is going to call the next officer's meeting. You are also invited to district council meetings. Get to know your area director and ask for a chance to find out what's happening in the district before it happens so you can bring that news to your club. You, I mentioned that you should be the advocate for the Pathways program. The base camp is a starting point for every Toastmaster working on their Pathways program. You should help people log into base camp, help them choose a pathway, help them find the resources and give them a taste for what they're going to be doing in the meeting. You should, if you know that you're going to be absent in one meeting or possibly several, find someone to help do the things that you do to make your club successful and be thinking about the end of your term. Your term is not a complete success unless you've helped arrange a successor to take your place. Ask someone to be part of your education team and then ask that person to run for office to serve your club. It's a great way to build relationships in Toastmasters, to build new skills as a mentor, as a leader. So we, we're always looking for continuity of the program and a good succession plan in our Toastmasters experience. What's the executive committee do? Well, one of the big things we do is look at the distinguished club program and report how well we're doing. You, you play a big part in that by keeping track of what members are doing in your club. How many people are planning to achieve level one in pathways, level two in pathways, on up through level five. And level five is the big one. It's when they get a certificate and a recognition from the international organization. You can be part of adding recognition to your program. And you take that information to the, the executive committee. Perhaps you need to say, we need to give Laura a chance to give a major speech so she can complete her pathway. And you plan for it on a program. Perhaps you have a speech that's going to take up half the program. Well, you, can, you can't have another speaker on the program, but that's okay. For occasionally, we make modifications to make that happen. Also, we have a tradition of holding speech contests in District 3 Toastmasters, and those contests begin in our club. You are the contest planner and organizer for your club. We hold our contests usually in the winter and spring, Find out more about what those dates and events are going to be from your area director. In serving your club, you have four good questions you can ask, and those questions begin with how, when, who, and what. You can begin by asking, I know I've got responsibility. How am I going to fulfill this responsibility? Perhaps you need to talk to other mentors. Perhaps you need to observe another Toastmaster club. Perhaps you need to talk to the district leadership and find out what would they do in your situation? When? When will each action be completed? I like to think that we are not planning fully unless we've set a target date for our 
goals, and achievements. So whenever you do any planning, assign a date, a projected date for accomplishing that. Who? You don't do this thing alone. You can build your own team around you, your own education team. Who can you get to be on your team, to be someone in mind as a future successor to your club? Who can help you? And what? What materials and resources can you use? I've mentioned it before. The Club Leadership Handbook is the singular guide for discovering materials on the club experience. It's the, the go-to place for learning how a club is run. It's got the instructions not only for vice president of education, but for the other six elected club officers. Want to know a timeline for the year? You'll find that. Do you know what the four values of the Toastmasters Club are? Do you know what the mission statement of the Toastmasters Club are? You can find that in the club leadership handbook. And you might consider bringing the mission of the Toastmasters Club to your club meetings. You might say that after the Pledge of Allegiance to reinforce the idea that your club has a high purpose and you change lives. So think about the who, when, how, when, who, and what that you bring to your role as Vice President of Education. We're going to talk now about the resources that you have to help you. And one of the big resources is the legacy that you have in the club, the experience that you have in running a successful club. You have people you can talk to in the club, but your resource list goes beyond the people you already know. I encourage you to attend district-sponsored trainings. You're right now taking part in Toastmaster Leadership Institute. Maybe next time you want to do more with us. Maybe you'll be a moderator. Maybe in the future you'll be leading TLI like I'm doing today. Read through materials and share good ideas with your club. Be an advocate for bringing your executive committee together. Meet with the last executive committee and ask what you need to face in your current year. Talk to the person who filled your role as vice president of education before you. And what I recommend is if you're all going to attend Toastmasters Leadership Institute in June or July, plan, set a date now for your officer meeting in the second half of July. Put a date on your calendar. Is it going to be virtual? Are you going to be meet, meeting at someone's office or at a restaurant? Think about the logistics of your first meeting and come to the meeting prepared. I encourage you to, if you have a club over 20 members, think about inviting people to serve on an education committee with you. Get people to say yes, they will meet with you and hold your own committee meetings. Maybe you only meet every other month, but get people to talk about the, the educational plan for your club and talk to members who are not on your team about their educational goals, what they want to achieve by the end of the Toastmaster year. The Toastmaster year ends in June, but there's a mini end of the cycle in December. So ask people what they want to achieve in either December or June. Here are some resources that can make a difference for you. I encourage you to either look these things up, jot down the names of these things, and find the Toastmaster link. Most of these are really easy to find if you do a search on the resource name. Contest rules, it's going to be important for you in the winter and spring. Every club leader should know about the Distinguished Club Plan. You may want to review the program goals in the DCP or Distinguished Club pr Program and get yourself a wall chart, something you can display at the meeting that shows your progress toward meeting DCP goals. Consider getting the accredited speaker program to encourage the most experienced members of your club to do something big that's few Toastmasters end up doing, but it makes a huge difference to one's career. Think about the FAQs that go along with the education program and being able to answer them for new members. Get yourself a membership achievement record. And some clubs have a large budget that 
they don't know what to spend spend on. It seems funny, but we we can grow large budgets in Toastmaster clubs. Go to the Toastmaster store at the bottom. It says Toastmasters org slash shop and look up coffee mugs, look up pens, look up special gifts like a polo shirt or a notebook that have the Toastmaster brand on them. Hold an open house and give away some of these things. They're an approved use of the club budget. Not everything is. You can't buy club members a steak dinner on it, but you can buy things that support and promote the club as reasonable purchases as a contest win or as a uh, thank you for guests for coming. So think about building the PR and goodwill for your club with some giveaways and gifts if your budget supports that. It has been my pleasure to spend this time with you in the Toastmasters Leadership Institute. I hope some of you will come say hello to me and ask me any questions you have about the Toastmasters experience. I plan to be a Toastmaster for the rest of my life because this program keeps giving back to me and I've decided that I want to keep giving back to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a club officer. And I hope your club is stronger than ever at the end of your term.